Hey guys, in today's video, I thought I would show you the tools I most commonly use to edit photos within Adobe Lightroom. These are six different settings that you can tweak and they can make a pretty big difference to the photos you have shot. We've all been in a position at some point where a photo you've taken, while it may be beautifully focused, perhaps you haven't had the focal length with your lens to get right into the subject and frame it how you need it to. Perhaps the light has been a little bit off or the floodlights are quite poor. Um, basically, things just aren't as you envisage them. So these tools should help you with that. Number one is the cropping tool. When you go into the develop tab here, you're gonna to wanna to start editing your photo within this area. But the first thing I often do, especially with football photography, when we're in big wide open spaces and perhaps your subject isn't up close or maybe they've just got a lot of space around the outside, um, that space is kind of wasted. And you can see on this photo I've got in front of me here, um, case in point, there's a lot of wasted space kind of around these areas when the action is actually right in the middle here. If we zoom in, you can see it's nicely in focus and it's showing that defender just tackling the ball away from the forward. So what we want to do, that is obviously a photo you're never going to submit. And I took a few of these types of images in the last few games, just so I've got a bit of stock to show the most dramatic changes with some of these tools. So let's dive in. Crop is this little rectangle over on the right hand side here crop overlay if you hit that you'll then get this grid around the outside now um important thing to notice aspect ratio i keep this locked and at original and that just means that when i do change the size of this it's going to keep the proportions the aspect ratio uh, consistent and the same and in its original format you can if you want to change this into maybe square or more of a portrait um aspect ratio if you want but for ease i'm just going to keep this as this landscape 16 by 9 and all i'm going to want to do is crop it in quite a bit tighter than it is now like so and then also if you hold your mouse anywhere sorry hold the button on your mouse anywhere outside of that um cropped area you can see that then when you drag you can straighten that up now you might have also seen my um video recently about some of the great hidden tips and tricks with with adobe lightroom and one of them was this angle tool here this is another way when you're in the crop overlay where you can straighten your image horizons if you want check out that video to see how to use the the level tool um, but for the sake of this back to the cropping i'm going to leave a little bit of space to breathe around the outside but otherwise that is done and you'll notice a little bit of tweaking needed on that um, horizon i think it's pretty tricky to get right You'll notice there in terms of where the subject is, that is pretty much right. We might want to do a load of other edits to kind of bring this to light a little bit, um, but we will do those on the next step. And that does lead us on to number two, which is the contrast. So often when you're shooting sports, if light can be changing quite often, or you're in a scenario where perhaps the image maybe doesn't quite pop as much as it should, uh, I find the contrast slider a great little tool to use just to bring things to life a little bit and just define that contrast a little bit more between different subjects within your photo. So uh, it's not going to be that do that much in this photo other than I'm going to guess really um, isolate the players a little bit from the green pitch and probably put a bit more colour into the pitch depending on how far we drag it up. So you'll see there it is just changing ever so slightly and already I've only moved that up 13 points but that already looks better if we reset that can see a bit of difference uh, it's probably not the best picture to show the contrast change on there we go knock that up still further it just looks a bit more fuller a bit more colorful as well you might want to kind of tweak the exposure um, but contrast is is a great tool and you can do this for artistic purposes so this will ruin this photo but if you've got maybe a close-up um, of, of an athlete or whatever you can actually crank this right up and start to get some pretty cool effects you see the image is changing quite a lot and it just adds something different it's a different take on the photo maybe it won't be in your first edit that you submit to your client but if you're playing around for your portfolio or you're looking for some photos of maybe a second edit to put on social media or whatever using the contrast tool can just make things a little bit different very rarely would i take it up this high by the way i'd normally keep it within 10 or 20 points depending on the photo but contrast is a great tool to use just to add a little bit of something extra to those photographs. Number three is highlights and shadows. Highlights and shadows are such a useful tool and something I use quite frequently and have done ever since I started to use Lightroom and Photoshop many years ago. 
it helps you to just level the exposures up in images and bring um, maybe some things that are a little bit dark back up again and also tone down some of those bright areas. Now this photo probably isn't a great um, solution, sorry, example to this, but you see where the sun is really on the, the left-hand side of this player here. The arm is starting to be a little bit overexposed and you can see the shadow um, the other side is quite dark. Now what we can do with this in terms of the highlights, we can start to drag that down and you see there, it's just really started to bring that player and the whole kind of scene really, those those overexposed places, you see in the stand in the background, there, those, those areas of the photo that are overexposed are kind of brought back into line a little bit and it looks a little bit more even. Similarly, with the shadows, you see if we concentrate on the guy's face here, if we drag those shadows up, what we're going to see is it just starts to brighten up a little bit in the shadowy areas. Now, um, as I say, not a great example this image to, to use for that, but it does kind of show you. Um, let me see if I've got any more images here with harsh shadows and, and kind of bright contrasts. Another great use for the highlights and shadows is when you're photographing at night under floodlights that perhaps aren't great. Uh, and as long as the teams you're photographing or the events you're photographing, the, the athletes on in a really dark kit. So in this photo I've got here, or these couple of photos, the teams are in white and also um, like a, an orangey kind of yellow color. You can see here all the, all the fans that are in the background are pretty dark, um, but the floodlights at this venue were, were pretty poor as well. So, and by the way, excuse the watermark that's on top of this, but um, if we increase the exposure at the, here, you can see it kind of pulls everything up. So we wouldn't really want to do that, but perhaps we want to make these players pop out a little bit more. So what you can do, and it's a great way as well, by the way, to hide some of that noise if you are using an older camera and perhaps on a in poor light on a really high ISO and you get a lot of noise in the in the grain of the image, um, sorry, in the background of the image. If you drag the shadows down, you'll see that a lot of the detail in, in, in the background there has disappeared. And then what we can do is just tweak the shadows ever so, sorry, the highlights by bringing that up ever so slightly. You can see straight away that the players are now much more prominent. They're popping out of the image and that kind of dark, horrible background has faded away. Similarly, so let's just try that on the celebration shot. We do exactly the same again. We can drag the shadows down. And these are, by the way, slightly edited photos already, hence the watermark. If you go and try this on some of the night photos you've got, you'll really see the difference. So um, we've dragged, dragged the shadows down, increased the highlights. And uh, I'll say if we just go back to reset, and you can see the difference there. Might not work every time, but certainly a good one to try. Um, highlights and shadows, both for night and day, has a ton of uses. Next up is clarity. The clarity tool in Lightroom, when used properly, can be really quite a cool editing function to have because what it can do is it just brings a little bit more detail and uh, punch out in some of the, the areas of your photo. So um, here's a, an image we're all probably familiar with now if we're shooting regularly is, is the old uh, goalpost being sterilized um, during half time and before a game. If we, in the developed panel here on the right hand side if we go down to clarity here and we start to tweak this you just see you see some of the mist on the um it's in this area here just watch it kind of become a little bit more clear and it can just make the photo a little bit more spectacular so if we reset it sorry it's taking the crop out as well um let's do that again for you right there So you see if we drag it back down, you kind of lose that detail. Okay, so again, when used with contrast, this can be a pretty um, artistic tool if you want to. I'm not a massive fan of HDR images. I, I do think they've got um, their place, but when you crank things like clarity and contrast up together to so really high levels, it doesn't give a HDR effect, but it does kind of um, look overworked. But anyway, you start to see that these two two sliders here can have quite an effect but clarity is a great one and then on the flip side of this you can also make things a little bit more blurred by just taking that clarity down and again it could be useful for some sort of weird artistic shot you've got in mind um, as well so that's the clarity tool next is saturation now some images you may take especially 
if you're in um, an arena that's perhaps got some quite poor floodlighting and you get so many different hues, whether it's blue or sometimes like an orangey hue off floodlights. And plus, depending on the weather, if it's really cloudy, a dead kind of sky, then, then some of the colours can just not really pop as, as you wanted them to. So one way you can change that is to use the saturation. So um, this photo here, I've not done any tweaking yet. I'm just going to can't stand looking at photos that haven't been straightened out so um i'm gonna do that to this one crop it like that level it up and then if we crank the saturation up you'll see a lot more color starts to be added to the photo you see that so it just starts to bring it alive the blues have become a little bit stronger on the shoulders and in the stand behind them in the background and also the pitch has certainly just become a little bit flusher a little bit greener so you see There we go. You see, like it is now, looks really good. And if we click saturation back off and reset it, that's when you kind of realize the difference it's made. Again, like so many of the other settings, crank it too high and you're going to start off a really odd looking pitch. So um, again, use it sparingly. Don't go too far on it. And another really important thing to note, in my opinion, if you're editing a single set of photos, don't put the saturation on, say, 40 or 50 on one photo and then another one kind of from the same position and that really low because it's just going to look really odd that you've got um, such different looking photos across your set. Um, so use it sparingly but it's a great way to bring that a little bit more colour and making some of those colours pop a little bit more if that's what you're trying to do. And the final editing tool that I sometimes find useful when shooting sports is a temperature slider here in Lightroom. So again we're in the develop tab similar photo to what we've just been on um and the reason i've chosen this for the temperature one is if you if you look at the photo it was a really cloudy day um or overcast day but then every now and then the, the sun would pop out so i make a rod for my own back sometimes because i shoot in manual more often than not it's just how i feel most comfortable um so when some of the photos coming out they just don't perhaps look a little bit warm um as warm as they should do especially on a day that was although it was cold it was bright and sunny so you see this photo uh it's slightly underexposed actually but we're not going to touch that for, for purposes of this demonstration but if we crank the temperature up look what happens it just becomes a little bit more um a little bit softer doesn't it, it becomes a, a nicer image it becomes a, a more colorful image and is a little bit more representative of, of the weather that day as well so if we reset it we've only taken it up 14 points by the way so if we reset this slider you see it really goes quite dark and dull and, and wintry looking and i'm shooting this in easter weekend in 2021 it, it's a bright sunny weekend while it's cold it's bright and sunny so really i think around 14 15 you can see that really just brings that photo a little bit warmer and a little bit nicer again just for kind of demonstration purposes look what happens if we crank it right the way up so again colors become totally kind of garish and horrible and um not something you'd ordinarily want to use maybe maybe you would i i certainly wouldn't um but again i just want to kind of demonstrate what this tool can do and then to finish this video off if we um to use this this particular photo as an example i'm just going to kind of group all those little edits together and show you what a difference it can make so the crop and the straighten we've done there we've already done the temperature correction going to increase the contrast a little bit as well and again it just brings these players off the background a little bit and takes any of that wondering eye you may have to the to the guys on the bench here or this player in the background it kind of takes your focus right away from that cropping can also help do that as well so if you want to crop it a little bit tighter um the rule of thirds i'm digressing here i know but the rule of thirds in sports photography is um something you can still use for kind of action shots and things when you're cropping them but it's not as important as it say is when you're talking about um landscape photography it's not you know i never get hung up on the rule of thirds in sports photography it's such a um a background consideration it's, it's all about what is in the crop and the picture and the story you're telling but in some instances i will use it so on this because we've got kind of these guys running into the left of shot i've uh lined up the grid on this crop tool just so the the player who scored number 22 there is um is celebrating on that line of third there highlights and shadows probably not needed so much here um 
to be honest. Again, we can maybe just bring those highlights, which are going to be the players primarily, but we've also got a lot of light flooding in this top right-hand corner from, from the sun behind the stand, so we don't probably want to do too much with that. Clarity might make this look a little bit clearer, actually. So again, it just brings a bit of definition out in the facial features there. So we've we've tweaked the clarity ever so slightly. So that's a bit too much, but yeah, maybe around there is good. Um, temperature, as I said, we've done, and the saturation, we could put a little bit of colour back in kind of the blues here and maybe the yellow in the steps in the background, so um, there we go. So, using those six things I've mentioned there, crop, contrast, highlights and shadows, clarity, temperature and saturation, have taken that to be our final photo. It's warm, it's well composed, it just looks nice, it works, and then... If you want to see what kind of impact that has actually made in reality, click the reset tool down here, bump, and you'll see the difference. It's a marked difference, isn't it? There we go. There's a massive difference when we toggle between them. And, and that just goes to show how important it is to kind of get to know Lightroom and make sure you know what it does because you could get a photo that is a little bit average and normal, but really you've shot it in focus, you've captured the emotions, but perhaps you weren't as zoomed in as you wanted to be or could be. Um, maybe you didn't have the gear to get in terms of the focal length to, to get in as tight as you wanted. Maybe the light wasn't as kind as you needed it to be. Maybe your camera doesn't catch as much clarity as you want to. So just those five or six things I've mentioned there can really just take uh, what a, a crisply focused and well caught photo, but not great. You wouldn't submit that to anybody. You probably would submit that. So um, there's a few things that I hope help you out. That's what I use. They're the kind of the main bits I use on a match day. I find them incredibly useful to just make sure those images I am sending to clients are sharp, they're colourful, they're vibrant, and they're telling the story of the day. Hope you liked it. If there's anything else you want to know about what I do with my sports photography or edits or anything like that, do let me know. Drop me a comment um, on this video or one of my others. 